Good morning, Good Samaritans. Good to see you again. Glad to pray with you this morning. We're going to use the daily devotion for individuals and families found in your prayer book on page 137. There also should be a link um, where you linked to this video that has a service sheet if you want to follow that. So we begin with part of Psalm 51. We say it together. Lord, open our lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The reading I've chosen for today is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. So how are you and your family doing with this pandemic isolation life? Some of you may not feel too isolated because you're cooped up at home with your families and trying to juggle doing your own work at home and getting the kids through all their lessons, shuffling, computer time, um, and it may be like me trying to scramble together a Zoom presentable space in a household that is already scrambling in other directions. But still, we can't gather, since we can't gather as a congregation except electronically like this, we can't hold birthday parties with guests from outside the household, and we can't go to the hospital even to visit a sick friend. We can't even attend those funerals to help the folks we love grieve, when ordinarily we would at least show up to offer a hug and some kind of con consoling words. And Good Sam staff, as you may have noticed, I know, have been scrambling too to dream up new ways of being embodied together as we can, so that we can remember that in Christ, we are never alone. So last week or so, we've celebrated Holy Week and Easter in ways that reminded us that our good news story is what holds us together, holds us in hope and always, near and far. And you, I trust, have had a chance to connect with your loved ones and friends by phone and text and email and FaceTime and Zoom and Skype, all those ways. And maybe you've even written cards to folks who are almost always shut in. Maybe you've called up friends you haven't heard from in a long time because you just wanted to make sure everybody was okay. And you wanted them to know you love them, even from afar and from the distance of time. But still, here we are in the second week of our great 50 days and we are without our friends and relatives and fellow Good Samaritans who help us know who we are. Normally, these folks encourage our efforts. They commiserate with our struggles and they suggest things maybe that we haven't thought of. They witness our lives and that matters. In fact, that's how we know a lot of times that we matter. That's how we learn to see ourselves through all these multiple mirrors, these multiple lenses on our lives. And that's one important way. We watch and listen for the messages that folks are always bouncing back to us like echoes in a canyon. But since we are dutifully and caringly keeping ourselves physically apart, I'd like to suggest another way that our restrictions have laid upon our soul's table like a gift wrapped up in this season's difficulties. And that gift is the invitation to go inward for a while, to intentionally pay attention to what's going on at a deeper level. 
Our depths, you see, who we are in God, regardless of how others see us, often are most available to us when we are afraid or isolated and all our other defenses have been stripped away. Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46 tells us. Being still in a crowd of co-workers or surrounded by fellow parishioners and family members, that takes a lot of intention. And so this period of time out of time offers us the possibility of a kind of sacred retreat, a way of getting still and paying attention at least for a little bit to who we are in God so that our isolation can become solitude, can become a place of revelation. Let me tell you a story to illustrate. Years back, a friend invited me to go with her to St. Mary's Convent in Suwannee for their annual spiritual retreat that the nuns offer for their oblates. Those are the folks who choose to connect with that order by following a rule of life and sharing support with the order and the order sharing support with them. So after this friend and I checked in and we found our rooms and put our stuff away, the first item on the retreat schedule was dinner. Now this was to be a silent retreat, and for me it was my first silent retreat ever. So picture this large room full of women from all over East Tennessee and Middle Tennessee, many of whom have known each other for years from previous retreats or programs at St. Mary's, and they're all starting to form a line gradually for the dinner buffet and keep silence. Imagine that. Well, my friend had made it from her room to the dining space ahead of me. And since I'd never been to one of these before, I really wanted to be with her when we sat down to eat. So I wanted to move my way up in the line to get next to her. And so I began to weave my way through the huddles of women scattered in the room and getting closer and closer together because it wasn't that large a space. But because we were keeping silence, I couldn't say, oh, excuse me, pardon me, I just, I just want to catch up with my friend over there, the one who invited me. Well, without those words, excuse me, pardon me, could I just slip through here, please? I felt that my actions were exposing something. Those polite words that I normally use to cover up trying to assert myself and get where I want to go, um, they weren't there anymore. And so what showed, I felt, was my will just to act on what I wanted rather than attending and responding to the other people who were there ahead of me or around me. Just those few minutes trying to get in the dinner line with my friend without polite language to cover up my tracks revealed more to me than I had let myself see before. Being still, if only with my mouth, revealed something about how I related to others, something I needed to pay attention to. Now, let me be clear. When I recommend that we turn inside a bit and reflect on what's really here, I'm not suggesting at all that we should turn our isolation into some kind of self-scrutinizing perfectionism. That is absolutely not what I'm suggesting. Spiritual growth is not our trying to reach up and grab God but it is letting God into the deepest and most lonely, most hidden, most vulnerable, and ultimately most wonderful and awful fullness of who we really are. And the point of solitude in the spiritual life, solitude and quiet, is not so we can internally berate ourselves. It's not so we can vow to make ourselves over. That's not our job to do. The point of solitude and quiet is to make an open space in which God can show us what we can't even notice when we're busy going and doing and bouncing ourselves off of each other all the time. Be still and know that I am God, the psalmist says. One of the gifts of this season, I think, is that it gives us a great opportunity now to let go, if we will, of some of our normal distractions and let our interior interior dust settle a little bit. 
Our hope is to start seeing some of what God sees in us so we can begin to trustingly allow ourselves to open a deeper layer, a deeper layer, a deeper layer, and let those two be loved by God. Because we often hide them not only from ourselves, but we think from God's awareness. But solitude is about slowing down enough to lean back into God's love, because it's always there. It's spring. Think about those blooming bushes and trees outside your home right now. As Jesus said, they toil not, neither do they spin. They simply stay still. They have been rooted through the winter, and now they are available to the sun's warmth. And being so rooted, they allow the heat and the wind and the rain to peel back the petals from their blooms until those fertile inner parts are opened and fulfilled and seed for a new life can be cast abroad. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold, Psalm 46 tells us. God is that safe shelter wherein we can relax, we can let go and get quiet and just notice. Notice that God is God and we are not. God is God and we are God's beloved. The ones God wants to get close to. And for that, there is no season, there are no limits and no deadline. All that we are in times of solitude can slowly be set free and become fruitful in God's own time. So yes, we do hope to keep in touch with each other, especially with those who are most challenged or alone in this situation. Our lively connections are really important to all of our health. But so is this. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still. Be. We continue now with our prayers. And I invite you to offer your thanksgivings and intercessions as we pray. This is a prayer for use by a sick person in the morning. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I'm to sit still, Help me to sit quietly. If I'm to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. A prayer for those we love. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are already doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for quiet confidence. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, that we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to name before God all those for whom you have concerns this day. For those who are sick, 
for all who are caring for the sick, for those who are feeding the hungry. We pray for those out of work. We pray for all who are working to help everyone in this country have a place of peace and safety, of being well fed and healthy and surrounded by love. Strengthen us, O Lord, in those efforts. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to consoled, to understand as to be understood, excuse me, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And now we pray in the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. And we end with our collect. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May you have a safe, peaceful, holy and healthy day. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.